stop using DOSBox. It's a piece of Sorry. As you know, about two years ago, I did a tutorial here on YouTube on how you can use DOSBox to run your old games pretty easily. And the gist of that video pretty much boils down to the fact that you can take any DOS game executable and just drag it into the DOSBox icon, and it pretty much does everything for you. Now I would say all the information in that video is still good. You can go back and watch it, and you can get your games running. But that begs the question, is the original DOSBox really the best way to still run these old DOS games? I would say yes, but also no. Let me explain. I feel it's worth mentioning that DOSBox is old, and the last major revision that wasn't just a handful of bug fixes was released in 2012. Ever since then, development has been rather slow. The good news is that since DOSBox is an open source project, other forks have emerged that improve it in every aspect. The ones I'm going to be talking about today are DOSBox Staging and DOSBox X. Both of these take different approaches to improvements to DOSBox, but let's start with DOSBox X because I consider it to be the easiest one to use. One of the most intimidating things about the original DOSBox, to newbies at least, is when you first load it up, you just get a command line interface. To most, unless you're a penguin, that is a terrifying or frustrating prospect. DOSBox X alleviates these woes by adding a graphical menu system that allows you to do many things that would either require editing the config file or using commands in the original DOSBox. The best part about DOSBox X is that you have everything in front of you without the need to consult the documentation. Many of these features have been part of DOSBox forever that you probably don't know about. Like, did you know DOSBox has save states, can take screenshots and capture video? All very useful stuff that is now accessible via menu in DOSBox X that you can change on the fly. Most of the time, running a DOS program using DOSBox X is as easy as clicking on the menu button, selecting Quick Launch Program, and browsing to the DOS program you would like to run. Alternatively, you can also right click on the DOS program you want to run in Windows File Explorer and hit Run with DOSBox X. Now, most of the questions I got in my previous video about DOSBox were related to the CD-ROM. And getting CD-ROMs to work sometimes in DOSBox can be a pain because if you get one little command wrong, it's not going to work. Thankfully, in DOSBox X, uh, we can do everything within the menu. So I'm gonna show you how you can set up a CD-ROM in DOSBox quickly and easily using just the menu and a minimal set of commands. So let's get into that. So the first step is create a directory for your DOS games. I'm using a folder called C DOS games. It doesn't really matter what you call this folder, just know that if the CD puts anything on your hard drive, it's gonna go in this folder if you follow these directions. Now, load up DOSBox X. In the menu under drive, go to C and select mount folder as hard drive and browse to the C DOS games folder we made earlier. After this, all we need to do is mount the CD drive. If you're using an image file, go to drive in the menu again, and under D, select mount a disk or CD image file, and browse to the location of the image. Alternatively, if you're using a real CD drive, you can use the mount folder as CD drive and select the drive letter. So now DOSBox should have access to your CD-ROM and have a directory to install and store things. So what do you do now? Well, let's say you want to install something from the CD-ROM or image file we just mounted. Since we mounted the drive to D, all we need to type in is D colon and hit enter. The drive letter should change to a D, which is our CD-ROM. To see what's on the CD, 
type in dir and hit enter and you will get a list of files. In this case, we wanna run the installer for Dune. So now it's as easy as typing install and hitting enter and the program should run. Now in this case, if an installer copies files, they will be put in the C DOS games folder we created earlier. So how do we get to that if we need to load something from there? In the same way we got to the CD-ROM, all you need to do is type in C colon, and after that, we can type in DIR again to get a list of files. Now my installer for Dune here created a directory called Dune CD. To navigate to this folder, we need to use the change directory command. So all we need to do is type in CD followed by a space, and then the name of the directory, in my case, Dune CD, and it will change to it. From here, we can use DIR again to get a list of what's inside the directory and type the name of the program we want to run. Now, it should be noted if we exit DOSBox X, we'll have to go through all that drive mounting stuff again, which is kinda, you know, poo poo stinky. However, DOSBox X has a save state system, so we can kind of cheat. So once you get everything ready and you're sure it works, you can go to the capture menu and hit save state and give it a name. Now, if you load up a fresh instance of DOSBox, you can recall your configuration simply by clicking on the load state option in the capture menu. The capture menu also has options for multiple save slots, so you can configure things for multiple games and recall them quickly and easily. So that is DOSBox X what I believe to be the easiest DOSBox experience out there. However, if you recall, I did mention DOSBox staging earlier, which is another fork of the original DOSBox project. I find staging to be the most optimized version of DOSBox for gaming, but it's a bit more complex to newbies. While most games run well in the aforementioned DOSBox X, the project isn't centered around gaming as much as it is general emulation for the DOS platform. Commander Keen 4, for instance, with the default settings in DOSBox X, struggles with the jerky motion video issue, whereas DOSBox staging can run it perfectly. Another advantage of staging is the advanced scaling features. One of the major issues with OG DOSBox is how gross the scaling is on modern displays. Staging attempts to correct this using scalers and filters to give you the best experience based around the video output of the game being played. While I'm not usually a fan of CRT filters, I feel like they're tastefully used here to try and mimic the original experience. As the local sound card nut, I also appreciate the more advanced sound emulation staging provides. The Nuked OPL3 project is used by default here to provide more accurate Sound Blaster emulation that is far closer to original hardware. As far as ease of use, staging does add a right-click context menu for quickly loading games like DOSBox X does, but more complex configs like adding CD-ROMs will need to be done by editing the config files you see below. So if that scares you, maybe stick with DOSBox X instead, or check out my original DOSBox tutorial video as the configuration for staging should be the same. Just beware of the horrible potato microphone that I used in that video. So one final option, if you can't really get any of this working either with DOSBox X or DOSBox staging, is you can play a lot of classic games online these days. You can log into sites like Classic Reload and Archive.org and play these games right inside your browser. You might have a limited game library on there, but they have most of the classics you might wanna play, so it might be worth checking out for you. Also, a big shout out to all my patrons and YouTube members. I really appreciate the support in this way as well. 
But anyway, peace out and happy DOS gaming.